In this video, we are going to create Laravel application for our backend and Next.js for our frontend. I am really curious, what do you think about this strange mix? Is it okay or is it not okay or something in between? Tell me in the comments, what do you think? First thing we are going to do is to create a new Laravel project. So I'm going to the get started button, that's the installation, and we are going to run this first composer create project Laravel application. And we are going to name our project backend to easily distinguish between frontend and backend. And now our application is being installed and everything is going to be placed inside the new backend directory. So we can go inside of that one here. And if we run PHP artisan serve, that one is going to work on our port 8000. And here it is. So now we have the default Laravel application. So this is currently a Laravel full stack application that is using template engine called Blade on the front end. But we want to use Next.js and Laravel should serve only as an API. So it should be only the backend for our project. And for that, Laravel developers gave us a really great choice. And that's inside the starter kits, Laravel Breeze. And what are we getting there? That's a minimal, simple implementation of all Laravel's authentication features, including login, registration, etc. And if you check here, there is a link for Breeze and Next.js API. So now we need to install Breeze and to run our migrations. But to do that, we first need to require Breeze with our composer. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to kill the app for now. And I'm running composer require Laravel Breeze dev and now breeze is being installed and that's it so now we should just run php artisan breeze install and if you can see here so which breeze stack would you like to install we have blade with alpine we have live wire and we are going to use api only so we don't need any web option we don't want their front end we want to build front end on our next.js application and for testing framework, you can choose whatever you like. I'm going to choose past. And now that one should be it. Awesome. And one new database migration has been published. Would you like to run all pending database migrations? Yes, I'm going to run all the migrations. And with that, this should be finished. And there it is. Awesome. So now let's run it again. PHP artisan serve. And check out now what are we getting on our port 8000. When I refresh, we are getting only the API response and we don't have any more that web part of our project. And when we open our code, I'm going to the terminal and to the projects backend and there I'm going to open our code. So here it is. And here we can see the routes, for example, and then auth.php. So Breeze created all the logic that we need for our authentication. And we have the controllers and everything working. So we can start using it immediately inside of Next.js. But we are not going to do that. I'm just going to quickly create one user resource. And we are going to call that resource on our Next.js application. So I'm going to the Laravel resource documentation that's eloquent. And here I'm just going to run this default make resource user resource command running it inside the terminal. So we created our user resource. And if we check it out here, user resource, here it is successfully created. And now we just need an API endpoint. So I'm going to delete this one and we need our new route get and I'm going to call it slash users and that one is going to be a function. And inside we are going to return our user resource. Here it is this one. And that's going to be a collection of our users. I'm using the user model and I'm calling for all of our users like this. Awesome. And just to remove this one. And now I'm going to my environment file. And here we are currently using SQLite. I want to change that one to MySQL. 
and I'm going to use my real database for this one so I can show you the data I have prepared inside of my SQL Ace. Here it is. So I created three users that we are going to return to our application and I'm just changing this to example. That's my database name and password is going to remain a secret. So I'm closing this one. So I changed my database password and now let's go and test it out. So here on our port 8000, we are going to the API slash users. Here it is, enter. And we are getting all the users from our database served as API data. And this one can now be used on our Next.js application, same like we are using any other backend. So now it is time to install new Next.js application. We are going to our projects. We are running npx create next app latest, and we are going to call this one frontend like this. So we are just going to hit enter, enter, enter. We are going to use all the defaults from Next.js. Our project is successfully installed. We are going inside of our frontend directory and we are running PM, PM dev. And now we have here our default Next.js application up and ready to work on. And now we're going to remove all this default stuff from Next.js. So I'm going to delete everything from our first page here. And also these classes, we don't need any of that. And this image, awesome. And now here we are just going to say frontend and let's see if that one is working. PHP Stan is making a mess here. And here it is, that's our frontend, awesome. So what we need to do now is to make a bridge between our Laravel application, this one, and our new Next.js application. So we are going to create here a new directory called server. So this is now our frontend. This is the Next.js application. And there we are going to create a new file and call it users.ts. So how I usually do it, I name the file with the resource that we are going to get. And usually there we can just create a simple CRUD. So create, read, update and delete. And this time it's going to be read. So I'm going to call it get. And that one is going to be an arrow function like this. And we are going to export it so we can use it on our page. And in this file users.ts, I'm going to put use server. Generally, we don't need this one inside of our users.ts file because page.tsx where we are going to call our users file is already a server component. And basically whatever we call inside here is going to happen on the server side and not on the client side. But anyway, I love to see use server inside of my server files because when I come back to this file two months from now, I'm going to see this one and visually my mind is going to say this file is safe. Here you can call process.env.anything and that one is going to stay on the server side and it's not going to be exposed on the client side. So now here we have to call our Laravel API and for that I'm going to create a new .env.local and we are going to create app URL which is going to be URL of our local local host so that's 127.0.0.1 and port 8000 and that's our application from here so that's our Laravel application and we can put here also API because all the API endpoints are going to have this API prefix and now we can call here simple fetch so here I'm going to create a new constant called data and we are going to wait for fetch of our process.env.app URL and here users we can maybe remove this slash from here so we can put it here to be more readable like this and now we are going to create json out of the data and that's await data json like this and to console log it to see what are we actually getting here so now 
here I'm going to call our data equals to await and then get from our server slash users like this. And we need to put this function to be sync so we can use this await and let's see what are we getting now. So now here, if I refresh this application and we go to our server, here it is. We have our data and those are all our users from the database of our Laravel application. And let's just display this one quickly on our front end. So here in our users, we are going to return json.data. That's the format how Laravel is returning the data. And now here we need to know what to expect. So we are going to create an interface user. And there we are just going to put email and ID so we can use it as a key. And we are going to say that this get method is going to return a promise of bunch of users like this. So now when we go to our page, we know exactly what is our data and we can go here, create a div and inside we are going to map through our data and each piece of that data is going to be a separated user and we are going to put a paragraph here. Key is going to be user.id and we are going to display user.email. And now when we go here, we have our three emails coming out of Laravel backend. That's it warriors, working again with PHP was really nostalgic for me. I hope you enjoyed and if you want more content like this, join the mighty horde, subscribe!